On this project, we have two fireplaces that have curved hearths. We're going to install hearthstones on both the fireplaces. The first thing we're going to do is go to our local supplier and see what kind of material they have to use as a hearthstone. We found that they've got several options in stock. The dimensions vary from 19 by 20 to 24 by 24. So, where to start? There's three factors to consider. The size of the stone, the length of any one edge in order to still provide an arc shape on the hearth, and the orientation of the grout line. The first thing to do is to get some measurements. I'll start with the length of the hearth. With that, I'll get the center line of the hearth and mark that as a reference point. At the center line, I want to find the height of the arc. I find this to be 11.5 inches. I now have the width of the arc at 97 inches and the height of the arc at 11.5 inches. And with this, I can go to the internet and find a radius calculator off of an arc. In the time lapse that follows, you'll see how I use this radius to set up string lines that will help determine where the grout lines fall and how large each stone will be cut. I'm back in the shop to make a mock-up of each piece of the hearth. The white cardboard that I'm laying out is a template that I made of the hearth. I don't have a work table that's as long as the hearth is wide, so I took the work table and set my table saw next to it and made a wide enough space to work on. I taped down the white template with the back edge of the template parallel to the edge of the table. The red string line I'm putting in place now will be a reference for the back of the hearth. The rolling cabinet you see on the right will be placed 9 feet from the front of the arc. All of the grout lines will point to this one common center point. There are three items to watch in this phase of the layout process. The first is the white cardboard which represents the hearth that will be covered by the stone. The second is the string line that will represent the cut points on each stone and the grout lines. The third item is the blue cardboard that will represent a template for each one of the stone cuts. Now we'll look at the layout of each stone. This hearth will require seven stones to be cut. The center stone looks kind of like a keystone. It'll be the easiest one to lay out. On either side of this, there'll be three stones. You'll see as we make string adjustments, we stand back and visualize how this would look on the hearth. We went through this process several times before we settled on the cut lines. We've settled on the cut line for each of the stones. We'll make a few notes on the white template. Then it's time to move on to the blue cardboard, which will be cut for each individual stone. As we mark and cut each of the blue template pieces, we have to make sure that we don't go past the back line. We have to make sure that we have the proper overhang. We're looking at about an inch overhang on average. And we have to make sure that we really accurately mark where the string lines are for the edges of each template piece. As we move on to mark the adjoining template pieces, we have to make sure that we exactly line it up to the piece that's already been put down. We then mark the front, the back, and the one side. After all the blue template pieces are cut and taped in place, I'll come back and trim a quarter inch strip out for the grout line. We rented a bridge saw to cut the stones. This allowed us to easily make long and very controlled cuts. Using the blue template pieces, we laid them out on a stone, used a marker to trace around them, and then laid that onto the saw. Aligning it with the saw blade was easy. We just took a straight edge and ran it across the cut point that we wanted on the stone, then lightly clamped the stone down and let the saw do its work. It's time to move inside. The first step is to put a thin mortar base down and then install the cement board. Now we'll dry fit the stones. This is the last chance to make any corrections. The fit looks good. We'll slide the stones off now and we'll get ready to put down a bed of mortar. Then the final install. Using a notched trowel, we'll put down a bed of mortar. The stones aren't uniform in thickness, so in some places we'll have to put down a little extra mortar. 
we've looked at that when we dry fit it and made some notes as to where we need the extra mortar. And uh, so at this point, uh, we're, we're pretty confident we lay them down, get to come up to the right height with a little extra wiggling and pressure and tapping, uh, we'll get it nice and flat. We are almost there. What remains is to put in the grout, to clean up the stones, and then we're ready to move on to hearth number two. The process here is the same. In the background, you can see that I'm laying a mortar bed. You can't really see the mortar going down because for this one, I've chosen to use a white mortar. With some experience and a little confidence, we got this fireplace done in about half the time of the first one. Day one and day two, we probably spent two to three hours a day working. Day three, we probably spent about five hours total. That would include running down to the rental to get the saw, all of the cutting of the stone, and the laying of the stone. There would be another short session after the base mortar had dried to do the grouting. Well, this project is done. This is a before and after photo of the first fireplace. The hearthstones turned out to be a good color match. You may also notice there's some rock repair on the fireplace wall. Fireplace 2 was a little bit different. It was wider, it was a little bit shallower, and the arc was a little bit more gentle. You may notice on the after picture that I made a frame as a surround for the fireplace. <laughs> 